Hello everybody and welcome back to Leeton. My name's Jace and this channel is all about our journey to become more self-sufficient in fruit, veg, eggs and maybe some honey. And today's video is all about using pallet collars to make raised beds. So if you watched the last video, I'd put a couple of pallet collars down here just to see what it looked like. And then I thought after I'd finished filming, I went and got some more and laid them all out. And I've managed to get six down there with about a 250 mil gap between each one. And that's enough for me to get a foot in, lean over to the back of the bed to do any weeding, etc. And I did put quite a bit of thought into, is it the best thing to do? Or should I just make one long bed down there? So I'm going to explain now why I've come to this decision and why I think it suits our garden. So what I did was I wrote myself um, a list, basically pros and cons list. And um, I've just put it on the screen here for you to have a look at. So I wrote down on the left hand side, the things that are important to me with regards to our garden. Um, so if we just go down quickly, slug and snail habitat, well, anytime you have a raised bed and you have wood, um, it is a habitat for slugs and snails. They can live under it in the day in when it's hot and then they can come out at night and they can live inside the wood as it starts to rot down as well. Now, we struggle to find slugs and snails in our garden. And I think that's partly because the previous owner, owner kept a lot of birds and poultry, and that's what all the sheds were for. So I'm guessing they decimated the population over many years. And also we've had a lot of soil dropped on top of the original soil. So that probably buried quite a few and there hasn't been much growing down there so there isn't a lot for them to eat so at the moment i'm not too concerned about that ease for no dig so basically it's going to be a lot easier for me to convert a small pallet collar bed to a no dig bed than it is the whole length of that piece of the garden maximum growing space well that is a bit of a con when it comes to raised to pallet collar raised beds as I'm thinking of setting them up because I need a little pathway between each one. So I do lose a little bit of growing space. Ease of weeding. Well, again, that goes back to the path between them. It means I can straddle a bed a foot either side or I can put one foot on one of the paths and just lean in and do some weeding or maintenance or whatever. So that's a pro. Bed rotation, having lots of little beds does make it easier to rotate crops, a bit easier to um, manage. Aesthetics, well, that's a personal choice, I suppose. I actually quite like the look of them. Um, some people would probably totally disagree, but that's a personal choice. And then crop separation. So obviously we've lots of little beds again. Bit like the bed rotation it's a lot easier to manage you know i can have salad leaves and lettuce in one i can have beetroot in another one etc etc so i worked out that list there pros and cons and as you can see for my situation and my opinions then uh it's a definite win for the pros and then I thought I'd just quickly work out. So if I want to turn these into a no dig <coughs> bed, because ultimately I want the whole garden to be no dig. But let's just focus on these for a minute. So if I want to turn one pallet collar into a no bed, uh, sorry, a no dig bed, cardboard at the bottom and then compost. Um, I worked at the volume there of a 1200 by 800 by 190 millimeter pallet collar. It's 180 litres of compost or 0.18 cubic metres. So if I was to fill a whole pallet collar using 
cheap multi-purpose compost, 50 litre bags, and let's say five pound a bag, it would cost me 18 quid to fill it to the top. But if I want to just go no dig and build that depth up over time, and I'll put a layer of cardboard down and then two inches of compost on top, it would cost £4.73 per pallet collar bed. So let's call it a bag. It's £5, isn't it? It's, it's a, a bag in each one. So I thought that might be a bit useful and that's how I came to my decision that I'm going to use the pallet collars as raised beds in that area. So there we have all the collars laid out roughly. And I think that'll work quite well. And that'll give me six beds that I can use, as I've already explained, for the reasons why. Now this ground does slope. It's higher at that end than it is at this end. And I obviously want to put the collars in level. So a little bit of digging to do, I think. That's the next job. So, all I would do is just mark where I've got it. I think what I'm gonna do is this soil height here is about the height I want it, so I've got to dig out the other end of this pallet collar. And I want to make sure I leave a decent gap between the pallet collars and the polytunnel base front. Two reasons for that. One, I don't want the wood up against each other because that's going to trap moisture and rot the wood quicker more concerned about the polytunnel base rail obviously it is treated timber but it will eventually rot and secondly by leaving a good gap that sunlight and that can get into and that i can keep clear and weed etc it's going to reduce slug and snails so let's do it remember I had a digger driving up and down on here reaching over to level the ground for the polytunnel so it's going to be hard it's going to be compacted what I'm going to do is dig it out level pile it up in the middle and then get a fork and just loosen this up a bit if I can because this is going to be rock hard I don't want to turn this soil over. I just want to loosen it. And then any organic matter that I put on here um, can be taken down easier into the soil. an old drain quite handy having uh, these raised beds that we're building with the gap behind and the French drain that we put in any rubble stones all goes behind there
Okay, so that's them in place. Pretty much level, they're not perfect, but they are only beds, to be fair. You know, we're only growing food in them. The plants aren't too worried if they're a millimeter here or they're out. So, so yeah, left a good space all the way down the side of the polytunnel so I can weed it and it's not so attractive for slugs as a hiding place. I've got the weed control fabric down between each one. So that'll help me from a maintenance point of view and weeding. And I only really had to dig this one, that one, and one down there. Because of the lie of the land, it's fairly level here. And then it gets to that one and it drops down. And I just think it, it makes it a bit different rather than just having a, a bed there, one bed. I've got these separate growing areas for different crops. And I can treat them differently. I can treat the soil in each one differently. So it's going to be quite, quite good, I think. And um, I think it adds a little bit of difference and character to the garden as well. So I think now it's time to get some cardboard and compost in a couple of these and then that's a couple of beds prepared. All the cardboard's for is it just suppresses the weeds long enough um, to kill most of them off. There are some that will always come through and you'll never eliminate weeding completely but it helps a lot. So put the cardboard down in the bed and then we put the compost on top. First of all I'm going to remove the tape. I don't want that in the soil. Well, that's sort of decimated the uh, compost pile. What's left there now, really, isn't decomposed enough to use. And look how dry it was, right down at the bottom in the middle. That hasn't rotted down at all. Look at that piece of cardboard. Now, it was quite a big pile. I mean, it was up here. But you would have thought over the winter it had got wet but it hasn't, so lesson learned there. Even if you think it's wet, have a dig around, have a check. It's all damp on the edges. But in the middle there, bone dry. Okay, note to self, keep the compost a bit damper. However, if we go and have a look at the beds, I managed to get five sort of done but look at that now this isn't perfect this compost at all but it's certainly good enough for what I want to grow 
and these two at the end aren't quite as high as the others aren't as deep and I just didn't have enough left to do the last one so I think what I'm going to do is probably buy some obviously buy some shop compost just some multi-purpose stuff and I'm going to fill that one so that'd be three bags as we worked out earlier and we can compare then maybe compare that one to that one on the end and maybe just top that one and that one up a bit or maybe I'll just top them all up because it'd be a bit unfair to compare that end one with this end one because of the different amounts of sunlight that they get so maybe I'll just top them all up now with some shop bought compost yeah I think that's what I'll do so I'm probably going to need three four well, I'm going to need about six bags I think just to fill these up so they all look about the same and then look at what's in the bottom of the compost pile now all this twiggy woody brownie stuff with a bit of green in it so what I need to do now really is get a load of greens in there before I add any more of the browns from the old compost heap. Well, that's probably 20% full already. Okay guys, well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. A lot more stuff coming up, veg growing, projects in the garden etc and uh, follow us on our journey cheers guys i'll catch you next time